Recently, I upgraded my microphone setup from a Yeti X over to a Shure SM7B and a Go XLR. And with that change, I decided that it was time to upgrade my microphone boom arm for the SM7B. Today, I've got three different arms that I wanna talk about, my experience with them and my thoughts on. And I've got the Rode PSA One Plus, I've got a uh, Blue Yeti or Blue Compass, Blue Compass, and a Ilago LP uh, boom arm over there. So we'll talk about the pros and cons and why you may wanna pick up one over the other. All right, now first up, let's talk about the Blue Compass. This is the boom arm that I've had for a couple years now. Uh, with the Blue Compass, um, I've got the Radius 3 shock mount and I've still got the Yeti X on here. And for the most part, it's served me pretty well. Uh, the build is decently good and it's made out of aluminum with plastic pieces. So you got the, uh, the joints are plastic, but the actual arm themselves are aluminum and they're uh, hollow. So it's the hollow tubular aluminum build. Now, because of that, uh, you've got friction joints here in three different places. These plastic joints, you know, you can tighten them to increase resistance or you can loosen them to the point where it'll just start falling or spring back up. There is control over the resistance or how likely it is to spring up. Uh, there is a screw on the bottom of here where you can turn to increase the resistance or decrease the resistance. And that usually helps with, uh, depending on how heavy the microphone is. So if you crank it all the way up, then the boom arm will like to spring up or you can decrease it and it may fall. Now between the resistance adjustments and the tension adjustment, you can generally get pretty good control. And uh, if you move the boom arm to a certain location, it usually stays. And you can see it, it's pretty easy to manipulate and it, it rotates very well. And just generally, I've had a pretty good experience with this boom arm. In my opinion, it works best with the microphone hanging from the top, especially with the Radius 3 shock mount. Um, this is kind of where it works very well in this configuration, but if you were to need to have it pointing upwards, something like this, um, depending on you know your microphone, of course, you're not gonna be using the microphone like this, for a Shure SN7B, if you were to point it in the vertical position, something like this, right? Uh, this is where it gets a little, little more difficult to manipulate because, because of the um, tensions and because of the way this is built here, it won't. It doesn't like to stay down and. Um, you can decrease the tension. It does help a little bit, but it, there is always a little bit of spring back with this. And that's kind of why um, I decided that it may be time to swap out the setup from the Compass over to a uh, PSA One Plus or a Elago LP mic stand. Um, and, and that's kind of where my whole thought process goes. If you have a condenser mic if you have a mic where you can hang from the top or even if, you know, from the bottom up, this configuration works very well, but it's, it's just when you need to have it all the way out, but then pointing upwards or, or something like that, it, it just doesn't work as well. And there is limited movement in, in the way that this boom arm uh, can be configured. You can go all the way out straight but you can't actually go the other way around. So there is a limit there. The last thing I wanna point out that I really do like about this arm is the channel up top. It's a very clean way to route your cable. So it can take both a USB cable as well as an XLR cable. And there are uh, these tabs where you can put it, put it in and then you just clip it down and it works very well. It's actually one of the better uh, cable management uh, tools because it once it's in there is really out of the way and you really only see the cable on the joints and there's a lot of slack in there to help with movement so it never binds up and uh, it's just a very good system in my opinion. The bottom mount of the Blue Compass uh, is made out of plastic. It's hard plastics 
um, or actually it's uh, two materials. You got metal on the bracket and plastic on, on the round cylinder ring here. Um, and this is made out of metal with a plastic handle. There isn't any padding on the bottom of the clamp, but there is padding on the, the bottom of you know, this side right here. So uh, I would have liked to see a little bit more padding here as well as here, but it works. Once you've clamped it in, it doesn't go anywhere. All right, now moving on to the Elago LP mic arm. Uh, this is the low profile version. And let me move it down here. So this is the base. Uh, this base is, I think it's a better design than the other one because you got, again, the padding on the bottom, padding up the top. It's made out of, I wanna say this is cast iron and um, it's a lot thicker and heavier of a material. And generally mounting it to the table is really nice. There is a nice little feature where you can push down here and then kind of twist. If your handle is, let's say, you know, sticking out like this, uh, you know, you'll bump into it, right? So you can push it down and twist it without actually tightening or loosening the clamp. So that's nice. All right. With this clamped in here, you have a very small, relatively small boom arm where uh, it just kind of sits right in. There are tap screws or set screws where you can screw it in a little bit to increase the tension, but just generally, it, I like it the way it is right now where you can easily move it, swing it around. You can see you got 360 degrees of movement. There is movement here as well as vertical movement here. So um, you can position it anywhere you like and get that microphone close to your mouth. With the SM7B, the way I like to use it is to have it attached on, on here facing upwards. So it's kind of right at your, your, your mouth, pointing towards your mouth or kind of pointed towards your mouth from the side here. The head here, this allows you to either put position the microphone vertically up or to the side. And generally, the configuration or the, the ability to position it exactly where you want is pretty good. There are a little bit more plastics in this setup than I would have preferred. Uh, the arm itself is made out of metal and um, you know is pretty sturdy. However, you've got plastic handles or pl plastic knobs and this whole head here is plastic. There are, I don't know if this is metal or there might be a little bit of metal here, but the clamp itself, I wanna say is, is made out of plastic. Because of the design of this head here, it's a ball head, there isn't very smooth movement. It's kind of just designed to be moved, positioned into place and then clamped down. It's not really meant for you to kind of, to manipulate in the way that a floating, a fluid ball or ball joint is meant to be used. For $100 though, I think it's a little bit on the cheaper side because there is a lot of slop. You can see here with this tightened down, there is just a little bit of movement. Granted, it's not that big of a deal, but um, compared to the other two, it's a little bit looser. There is a innovative channel for your cable routing where you can route the cables from below. So there, it's big enough for an XLR connector and then um, you can route the cable from here to here. I know this isn't an XLR cable, this is a MacBook Pro USB Type-C cable, but it works just fine. Once the cable is installed, it does allow the arm to be moved freely. However, you can see here, if it's on this side and then you wanna swing it all the way around, you can see the cable gets binded up a little bit. I would have liked to see a, a channel in here so that you can keep the cable right in the middle, but uh, I guess it's all right. Uh, you just need to make sure that there's a little bit of extra slack in your cable routing. That way you can actually still freely move it without it tugging on the microphone. There is also a potential, if it gets a little too tight and then you kind of bring it over, it will start to lift these, these covers. And because they're magnetic, it's, they're, it's not held in here. And especially if you have a thicker cable, right? You can imagine as it binds and then it kind of tugs, these, these covers may start to pop off or start to lift. I think one of the bigger benefits of having this microphone here or microphone stand is to be able to both game and have a microphone pointing towards you. So, uh, you know, with this setup right here, you can talk into the microphone, but also 
have unrestricted access to your either your camera or your screens. I really do like the design of this and, and kind of just the fact that it's coming up from below. Uh, this microphone stand is very similar in design to a, a monitor arm. Something a little bit more expensive such as the OC White uh, monitor arms, the low profile ones that kind of snake right underneath the arm, uh, monitor is, is, is a lot more expensive, but the design concept is very similar. So they kind of copied that and it works generally pretty well. The design and the height of the first arm is designed to be right at monitor height. So if your table wasn't as deep as what I've got right here, uh, if you got a little bit shallower table such as something a little bit more normal, you can actually clamp this at the back of your table and have this snake right under your table and this part of the arm you know, come directly towards you past your uh, keyboard and then you can raise it to wherever you need to without obstructing your vision. So I think it's a really good design if that's kind of the setup you wanna go with. With a side mounted setup here, depending on what you have on your desk, it does kind of get in the way and that's kind of the reason why I decided to go not not use this as my daily driver because I do like to have a laptop here. I do like to have other stuff here. So it, it does get in the way a little bit. Uh, you know, you can, you can see I can't actually open this laptop. Um, but because there is a joint right here, you do have a lot of freedom to position it however you like. You know, you can have it positioned like this. You can have it um, swung over a little bit and positioned like this. Just the freedom of getting that mic exactly where you want it uh, is a little bit easier with this joint right here than let's say the other two microphone stands. Just my opinion though. Now on to the Rode PSA One Plus. Now the plus in the name suggests that this is uh, very similar to the PSA One but upgraded, which indeed this is, it's got a few nice little upgrades. The first of which is the joint right here. This is a big upgrade compared to the old PSA one. Uh, this is a better quality, it's full metal, and it's a lot beefier of a construction. And it plays much better with uh, the SM7B. And what do I mean by that? You have the ability to twist the uh, joint here, twist the knob here, and have it screw in and you can lock it in. And because there is a little bit more length here, it doesn't interfere with the XLR cable as much as the PSA one. So you can twist and turn a lot more the microphone without this cable binding up here. Also very apparent here, you've got this neoprene wrap over the scissor arm mechanism. Uh, the neoprene wrap is appreciated because the scissor mechanism opens and closes as you move this thing. So you can potentially clamp your finger and get your finger stuck in here and it'll pinch your fingers. Uh, now it's just, it's impossible to get your fingers in there. So that's good. The road name logo on here is very prominent. You may not like it. Um, it is what it is. So uh, I guess just be aware of that. One of my favorite attributes of the PSA One Plus is the ability to easily move and manipulate this boom arm. The friction of the, road, or of the blue compass and the Yeti is, is sometimes really hard to, or you need a little bit more force to move it up and down or to, to, to bring it down. This here, it really is literally one finger mechanism or um, operation and the ability to spin this however you want really easily is very appreciated. The other thing about manipulating this boom arm is the parallel movement of the microphone. So once I've got it positioned to where I like, right? As I move it, you can see this mic is still pointing in the exact same direction. And this is really, really nice. And well, of course, if you're you know, twisting it away, it's gonna twist away from you. But uh, if you're moving parallel, you see it's not moving or it's still facing the same direction. And this is really, really nice where, you know, if I can bring it a little closer, I don't have to actually readjust this microphone. And I think that is one of the biggest selling features of this scissor design is that parallel movement. If there's a lot of trends nowadays that's going to the tubular version, tubular friction 
arm, arm um, design. But if you go with that, you're gonna lose this parallel movement. There's always some kind of trade-off, right? The cable routing system on the PSA-1 is minimal. Um, compared to the other two, this is actually one of the areas where this, I think, is a little bit lacking because you got four clips and a channel uh, on the joints here, but the clips themselves are very tight and very rigid, meaning once you've clipped it in there, there's really no movement. And um, because of that, they're kind of anchoring the cables here. And as, as you move this around, you can see this cable needs a little bit more, more slack and it's just not getting it. Or as I move this up, it just kind of binds up a little bit. So I don't know if it's, I would have preferred it if there's a little bit more slack or a little bit more movement allowed by the cable, by these clamps here. And sometimes when I'm moving it around, you can see this cable binds up a little bit, which is fine. But then when I bring it back down, it jumps out of the, the channel. So, you know, you're trying to get it back in and it's just, I might need to tighten here, tighten this here. And then, and then, you know, you got a little bit extra here. So it's just, it's not perfect. It works. It's not, it's just not perfect. <laughs> moving on to the mount of the PSA one plus, uh, this is made out of metal and you've got, um, the bottom clamp is you got a rubber pad and the top clamp as well here has a rubber pad. So it's sandwiched in rubber on both ends. And the, uh, the handle has rubber, rubber tabs on either end. So that's nice. It's a very basic metal handle. It's not as fancy as the Lago where you can twist and, and, and turn it, but I guess it gets the job done. You can always find a position where you can get this little knob out of the way. As you can see, all three mic arms are great mic arms and that they excel at different aspects. Uh, in, in general though, if, I, if you need a mic arm for a Shure SM7B, I do think the PSA One Plus is the best mic arm for that. However, if your considerations are that you want to have a mic arm that does not block your view at all, then the LP is the way to go. Or if you have a condenser mic or you have a shock mount or you want something that hangs up from above to drop down. The tubular design of the Blue Compass is a perfectly good mic arm to use for those kind of mics. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and tell me what arm do you have or are you looking at buying if I haven't covered it here and why. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.